Hey guys, Michael from Fire and Brilliance, and today's episode is a FAQs of Lab Diamonds. I know, I know, many people are constantly trying to figure out is a Lab Diamond worth it? So today's episode is about frequently asked questions about Lab Diamonds. So let's go over it. Number one, what is the difference between Lab Diamonds and Natural Diamonds? The simple answer is almost nothing. Keyword is almost, right? Meaning everything is identical. Durability, the look, the feel, the hardness, the beauty, everything is the same. The only difference between a lab grown diamond and a natural diamond is that one is made in a lab and the other one is mined out of the earth that's been there for a long, long time, right? So one is made by man, one is made by earth. So if you are to compare the two diamonds, it's exactly the same thing. The beauty, the looks, the feel, everything. It's the same exact thing. So if you are questioning what is the difference between a lab grown and a natural diamond, you have to not question any further because it's actually the same exact thing other than the fact that you can't call it a natural or you can't call it a lab depending on what you have. All right, question number two that people ask all the time from frequently asked questions. Are lab diamonds worth the purchase? Well, I don't wanna be biased and say one way or the other, but let me just kinda explain a little bit. To many, lab-grown diamonds are definitely worth the purchase, and I'll tell you why. They are more affordable than natural diamonds and offer the same quality, making them a smart choice for many buyers. Meaning, if there is a person that is trying to buy a diamond at the moment, who's in the market to buy a diamond for any reason, for himself, herself, to get engaged, whatever the case may be. If they're trying to buy a diamond and they're saying, wow, if I buy this one carat as a lab grown for a few hundred bucks, whereas I could buy a one carat natural diamond, which may cost me a couple of thousand to tens of thousands of dollars, depending on the quality, what should I choose? And you know, the thing is, is that at the end of the day, that's not a little money. That's a lot to consider. If you're talking about thousands and tens of thousands of dollars and you have the option to buy a lab grown diamond that looks the same, that feels the same, that appears the same, that's just as hard, everything is the same other than the fact that it's lab grown, that is definitely something to consider. And that's why most people will consider it in today's world. So if you're asking, is it worth the purchase? I'm not here to tell you yes or no. I'm just here to ask you, what is important to you? Is saving that money more important to you? Then go with lab grown. But if it's owning a natural diamond more important to you, then spend that extra money. So that's, that's basically the answer to that question. But to many people today, as a matter of fact, there's a statistic that's saying that anywhere between 40 to 50% of engagement rings in today's world, in today, current times, people are opting to go with lab-grown diamonds as opposed to natural diamonds. So number three, how do lab-grown diamonds compare in terms of durability? I think I mentioned it to this earlier, but let me go ahead and explain a little further. Let me read this real quick before I explain it. Lab diamonds are just as durable as natural diamonds. They have the same hardness and are are equally resistant to scratching and damage. Okay, so there's something called a Mohs scale. And if you don't know what that is, it's pretty easy to understand. It's something that measures the hardness of gemstones, okay? It goes from zero to 10. 10 being the hardest, zero being the softest. So if you own a diamond, that is the hardest gemstone in the world. On Earth. So diamonds is the hardest, moissanite is the second, and then sapphires and so on. But if you are talking about diamond, regardless if it's lab grown diamonds or natural diamonds, they are the same. It's on compared to the Mohs scale, a 10 out of 10 when you are measuring it in a Mohs scale. So it's the hardest gemstone on Earth. Again, regardless if it's lab grown or natural. Number four. Can lab-grown diamonds be used in all types of jewelry? The answer is absolutely yes. Just like natural diamonds, lab-grown diamonds can be used in all types of jewelry. Anything from earrings to necklaces to pendants to engagement rings to anything you could think of. Yes, even toe rings or all the other crazy types of jewelry that they have nowadays. Nose rings, nose piercings, anything like that. If you want to put a diamond on it, you could definitely do it regardless if it's lab or natural. Number five, 
Are there any ethical concerns with lab-grown diamonds? Well, let's see. Lab diamonds are generally considered ethical. They avoid the issues associated with conflict diamonds and have smaller environmental impacts compared to mine diamonds. And if you don't understand what that means, all that means is this. There are two parts of this equation. Number one is that are we talking about conflict diamonds? If you don't know what conflict diamonds is, conflict diamonds means that there are diamonds that are associated in regions where they may use these diamonds to fund wars, to fund bloodshed, to fund trafficking, to fund different types of social situations that you may not approve of. And if you are in that category, then you may not want to go with the natural diamond. I'm not saying all natural diamonds come from these types of regions, but some do. So if you want to 100% make sure that you are not dealing with natural diamonds that are from a conflict area that is using these diamonds as currency, then going with lab grown might be the better route. Now, the second part is the environmental impact. Obviously, natural diamonds, in order to understand uncover and find and discover these natural diamonds, we actually have to mine, okay? So people actually have to bring machinery into mine. And what that happens is that it really affects the ecological impact with the nature around it, with animals, with plants, with the actual natural habitat. So if you are against that, then going with the natural diamond may reduce that impact. Am I saying that going with a lab-grown diamond is the best environmental impact? Maybe not, because you know, it does take electricity, it does take energy, it does take some type of pollution in order to make lab-grown diamonds. I am not saying that lab-grown diamonds is a 100% going to not affect the environment, but if we are going to compare it to natural diamonds, for the most part, lab-grown is more environmentally friendly and conflict free in terms of those situations okay so that's it let's go keep keep going here how can i verify the authenticity of lab grown diamonds it's quite easy most lab grown diamonds like natural diamonds are certified meaning it was sent to a lab a gemstone lab such as gia or igi now if most lab grown diamonds, not all, but if you are to purchase a diamond that is large enough, it usually goes through this IGI or GIA process through the certification process with these companies, and it will validate that it's a lab grown diamond. It will specifically state that it's a lab grown diamond, and on top of that, Normally, it will provide you with a certification number, not only on their certification, but inscribed on the diamond itself. So that's what, one way you can authenticate the lab-grown diamond. Now, the next question is, do lab diamonds hold value over time? Here's a question that everyone is asking, and it's very, very, very controversial because you have one side, the retail buyer, you have the other side, the business owner, but there's two sides of the business owner that that's selling diamonds. You got the traditional business owner and you have the modern business owner. What, what do I mean by that? So the modern jeweler will basically give you the options. Do you want lab grown? Do you want natural? It's up to you. We don't care. What, whatever you like, here are the pros, here are the cons. You go ahead and decide. The traditional jeweler normally will be in a situation where they may feel as if they want to sell the natural diamond because they'll say, lab grown diamonds do not hold their value. But is that really true? If you really think about it, natural diamonds, all you have to do is do a quick internet search, Google search, whatever it is that you decide to do to do your research. Natural diamonds are actually quite plentiful. Are there rare natural diamonds? Of course, they're rare everything in life. If they're large enough, if there are colored diamonds, those are rare. But the basic everyday diamond that is purchased at a jewelry store that may be handed down as an heirloom are quite plentiful. There's been a lot of marketing over the years that has stated that natural diamonds are rare, but in actuality, it's not. So if it's not rare, do you think it holds its value? Many people will say that lab-grown diamonds do not hold its value. I'm not here to tell you that it does or it does not, because lab-grown diamonds are made in a lab, and the more they make it, the value may not hold up. But the difference is that you save so much upfront 
from buying the lab-grown diamond that it may be more worth it to do it that way than to hope that it still holds its value. So for example, if you buy a one carat diamond, natural diamond versus a lab grown diamond where the lab grown diamond is a couple hundred bucks and the natural diamond is in the thousands to tens of thousands of dollars. You're saving so much up front that almost you can maybe not even care whether or not it sells for the same couple of hundred dollars. Whereas a natural diamond, you are, can only hope that you can sell it back for the same price. And to be honest with you, if you, if you own natural diamonds, you may already know, most of the times your jeweler will not take it back for the same price you bought it for. And if you take it to a pawn shop, they're gonna give you pennies on the dollar. So you can decide for yourself whether or not it's worth it or not, but many people are buying lab grown diamonds today because of the fact that it's so affordable. The second to last question here in terms of frequently asked questions, is what are the most common misconceptions of lab diamonds. Common misconceptions include the belief that lab diamonds are inferior or fake. In reality, lab diamonds are real and offer the same quality as natural diamonds. And it's something I mentioned the entire video. It is not fake, right? All that is fake is in a person's mind. Anything can be fake, anything can be real. To be honest with you, I mean, okay, unless you, unless you call a natural diamond a real diamond and a lab diamond a fake diamond, Sure, you may want to call it fake, but is it really fake if it looks the same? It's just as hard. It's, it's made of the same chemical compound, almost 100% carbon. It's exactly the same. It looks the same, it sparkles the same, everything is the same. The durability, the quality, everything exactly the same. The only difference is one is made in a lab and one is made in earth, right? So. Is it fake? It's really up to you to decide. Some people make the tr more traditional, uh, old school jewelers may call it fake because they don't know how to categorize it. Or you can be in the new category where you're saying it's the same. The only difference is that it's made in a lab. So that's from that d perspective. And the last one that's kind of interesting here is do celebrities wear man-made gems and lab grown diamonds? And the answer is absolutely yes. You may not know but many, if not most, celebrities wear lab-grown gemstones. And there are a few reasons why. The two main reasons as to why people purchase lab-grown gemstones is because, number one, many of these celebrities do not care to actually go out and buy all this jewelry. It's really just for show so that they could walk in the red carpet, they could look nice for a night, they could go to a different event and look nice for a night, but they really don't want to put out 100,000, 200,000, half a million, 10,000, whatever that number is, to actually buy natural diamonds or natural gemstones. The second reason is if they do care to buy natural gemstones and have the assets to actually purchase it, they also don't want to lose it because of you know, just naturally losing it or because of theft. Many celebrities, A-list celebrities, all the way down to the social media influencers have purchased gemstones from us. I'm not gonna say who, but all I'm gonna say is that they have purchased from us before and they purchased it because of the fact that they would rather not take the risk of losing their natural, gemstones or because they don't want to invest on the actual real thing they're just doing it just for the looks so that said do celebrities actually wear it yes celebrities are just like normal people everybody the only difference is that they're in the spotlight they think just like us so just because they have money doesn't mean they're going to spend it on jewelry to have all the bling many celebrities will wear lab grown because it looks the same, it feels the same, it's, it is the same, the only difference is that it's made in the lab.